Hi guys, you're back again with Jay. Um, now, I wanted to continue these tutorials just a little bit because well, what I wanted to do was I wanted to make a couple of damaged versions and variations of this uh, concrete barrier that we've made here. So what I wanted to do is just take a chunk off a corner. Uh, that'll be just be one tutorial. I don't want to bombard it and let's make like three or four different variations in one tutorial because you'll get confused, different techniques will be used and you won't learn anything. So what we're going to do for just, it's only going to be a short one this time round. We're just, all I want to do is just literally take a chunk off. I know I've seen loads of tutorials, people taking this top chunk off. Um, I want to sort of stay clear of just taking this chunk off here. Only because everybody's done it. It's one of the most common things. Um, I don't know why why I don't want to do it but it's just I don't want to follow suit and do the same thing so what I'm going to do is something completely different and take off this corner here uh, yeah not hugely different but that's what I'm going to do I'm going to take off the bottom corner here my theory behind this is this area up here up at the top corner it's not going to be receiving a great amount of damage unless it's being shot at which is quite probable in a lot of first person shooter games because obviously people hide behind it they shoot at this try and get the headshots people hide behind it that makes sense however in a real world scenario which is what I've tried to make this tried to make it as realistic as possible um, the bottom's going to get damaged more often than not it'll get dropped it'll get run into it'll get banged onto others it's getting the most impact force on the bottom as it's getting dropped onto the floor it's getting stacked so the bottom is going to be receiving more damage so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a chunk off this corner here. So um, hopefully you've got your Blender file opened up. Um, just ignore this plane here. That's just for cycles. Uh, let's just hide those for now. <coughs> right. I don't know if you're going to be in cycles. I'll put this into the standard Blender engine and then everyone's on the same page. So with your barrier open let's get ourselves more real estate remember that shift in space to to maximize the window you're in so that shift space I'll turn on my screencast and then you know what I'm doing let's put it text yeah yeah that's fine okay uh, you'll notice I've made the change I'm on 2.7 now which is pretty funky yeah there's a couple of changes so yeah, not really much more to say about that. So when we left off, our barrier looks something like this. So this is it with the texture applied. You've got the concrete texture on the actual base of it. You've got the rust texture in there. Obviously with the shadows, it's got the ambient occlusion applied inside the texture. So it's all looking nice, pretty basic to be fair, but it's, it's going to do what it's going to do. So... There's going to be a couple of techniques that I'll do now and I'll explain along the way. What we need to do is, as we know, our model is pretty basic. I've tried to keep it as low poly as possible. It's only 356 vertices, which is uh, 327 polys or 654 triangles, which is pretty low, to be fair. It could be lower, but we don't want to go too silly. So what we need to do is actually add more geometry to this. So we need to add more loop cuts because we need to add, we need to basically get this more detailed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a loop cut just here. And loop cut is control and R just to add it. And like, don't forget, you'll see the purple one. So control R, you'll see the purple one. So you click to confirm, yes, I want it there. Then you move your mouse around and you can move it around and place it where you want. Now, you'll see what happens there. You can can you see the orange line here going down? You'll see anything on the left of the line, the texture is stretched. Anything on the right of the line, the texture is compressed. That's because we've added a loop cut and moved it along. So what it's essentially doing is stretching the texture with it. So what we need to do to try and bypass that is undo, get rid of that loop cut. If you can't undo for whatever reason, it's nice and easy to remove a loop cut. Just make sure it's highlighted. You can highlight it just by pressing uh, pressing and holding Alt and then right clicking on the loop cut, then press X. 
and go down to edge loop so you want to delete the edge loop and there you go it's gone that simple so with that gone what I'm going to show you now is one method that I I've never seen before it's just something I've sort of picked up from I don't know just trial and error really uh, what we're going to do is apply a loop edge loop here well we want it going from about about here because we need to add some like enough space to add geometry we don't want it too small otherwise it's pointless doing it we want a decent chunk missing so we want the edge loop to be about here now we don't want to apply an edge loop and then slide it across you'll see what, like you saw what happened so one method of doing this without stretching the texture is to control R as you're going to add, add an edge loop and then scroll up on the mouse wheel and you can see it applies well that's two that's three four five and upwards you can go to as many as you want you can go silly if you want but we don't need that many what I'm looking for is you'll see it's applied on this second edge loop I can't move my mouse down because otherwise you'll otherwise it'll disappear so on this second edge loop it's applied a purple edge loop here which is not actually applied it's showing we can put one there and um, that's pretty much where we want it to be if, if it was just the one it's smack bang in the center if it's two it's just perfect there so what I'm going to do is right cl uh, left click to confirm and you'll see it can move it around again we don't want that right click to lock it into place so you'll see no texture stretching so this is the uh, edge loop we need this one that I've just highlighted that's what we need to keep so without any texture stretching you right click on the other one so that's alt and right mouse click on the one we don't want X edge loop so there we go, we've got an edge loop exactly where we want it without any texture stretching. Okay, so that's a section that we need there. And then what we need is another edge loop just going around the top of this because we want to basically create a square of workspace that we can actually work in. So again, edge loop, uh, that's not quite low down enough so we scroll up on the mouse wheel. That top one would be ideal so that's fine for me so with two in place left click again you can move it around we don't want to do that right click just to drop it exactly where it was alt and right click to highlight the edge loop we don't want X edge loop gone so there you go two edge loops in place without any texture stretching we need to do the same thing again because we need a loop cup coming down here so control R edge loop uh, that's two, that's three, three is going to do me on this one because the edge loop on the f most furthest left if you follow that down it's going to be perfect here so that's fine so left click to confirm right click to lock it in place um, alt right click on the edge loop X delete alt right click on that one X delete the edge loop so now if we go into face select which is uh, you can go down here or you can control tab and select it from the mesh select mode face there what we need to do is highlight that one 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 basically inside the square that we've just created oh no we don't want that one <coughs> remember you'll see down here on the uh, on the tool text help mouse thing I don't know you'll see down there it's showing you that I'm holding shift whilst right clicking to select so we select the ones inside the cutout that we've just made don't forget the ones on the bottom because obviously that corner is going to be missing as well so now with that done what we want to do I'm, I'm going to take it out of texture mode the texture mode was just to show that things can stretch if you're sliding edge loops so I'm going to put it back in solid mode it's just easier to work with so what we're going to do with those faces selected what we're going to do is press E to extrude and then left click don't move your mouse just left click or right click whichever you choose doesn't really matter on that one and then what we're going to do with those with it's now created obviously an extruded section of itself press S to shift and shift it down a bit and I know what you're thinking wow that's incredible well done Jay uh, yeah that's just the basis of it and now what we're going to do is manipulate each one of these vertices to give it that jagged broken look okay so that's control tab 
go into vertex mode or down here again you can select it from there so you'll see each one of these is a vertice which we can then manipulate so this is now just a case of using the middle mouse button panning around and basically trying to make this into a divot to make it look as realistic as possible we don't have to worry too much about the geology and um, uh, uh, the geometry uh, mainly because we're going to do a lot of that in the texture so it's just literally moving around to get the best angle that you can there's no sort of easy way of doing this it's just a case of just moving the camera around and just pushing and pulling things until you're happy with it oh I see that's not going to do You don't really want any sort of pointy sharp edges too much. You want to sort of keep it as flat as you possibly can. Okay, if we go back into object mode, we can see that looks like a decent chunk's been missing. I'm I'm not overly happy with it, but that'll that'll do for that little bit there. Now what I'm not gonna do is what I'm not gonna try and do is remove any of these faces surrounding this selection because these will stretch the texture that's already applied to them so you don't want to move any of those anything that's orange you don't want to move just inside this area here that this area that we've just extruded and then started manipulating so by rights you can actually come in here and start messing around with these that's absolutely fine There's no rules against that. To be honest, you could spend all day doing this sort of thing. Once you're sort of happy with it, once you're happy enough with it, it's probably best just to stop and leave it there. Because if you if you mess around too much, you just you, you, you'll never be happy. You'll just constantly play with it, and then you'll be thinking, right, well. So what we need to do now is you'll see it's got these seams still inside here. These red lines are the seams, which is what we put in place to help unwrap it. Uh, we don't want a seam running through this central desolate bit. So what we need to do is just go into edge select mode, and that's Control Shift or edge select mode just down at the bottom here right click on that one, press and hold shift, right click right click, right click, right click so with the red ones selected you want to press control E and then clear seam, we need to clear those seams and you'll see they're not red anymore which is great so what we need to do now is basically segregate this area from the texture because if I go into texture mode you'll see it's very unsightly. It's got this stretching where we extruded it. Inside here is all warped and just disgusting. It's not good. So what we need to do is separate that section off from the rest of the texture. How do we do that? Oh, quite simple. We put in seams. We mark seams and then we cut this off and put it on its own separate part of the uh, part of the texture map. So. Um, still in edge select mode, right click on the outside of this here, press and hold shift, right click on that one, right click, 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 right click. So there you go, we've just highlighted that area there. And all we need to do then is control E, mark seam. Okay, press A to unselect everything. And there we go, we've got that damaged corner there. That corner is looking a bit too perfect, but I don't really want to play with that vertice too much. But we can manipulate that in the texture. I'm going to go into how we're going to be using projection painting and using stencils and such. So the texturing is going to be a little bit more advanced, which is why it needs its own video this time round. Um, so yeah, that's that done. Okay. So, uh, shift space, just to get out of full screen mode of that one. And what we need to do is, we need to create the UV map just for that section there. So remember, we go down to this corner and just drag it in. Split it 50-50 about. 
click on this box at the bottom here UV image editor and if we highlight all of this with you with your cursor inside the 3d view mode uh, just press A and it'll highlight all of your model and you'll notice oh I've already done this one cheating cheating um, obviously I've done it a little bit different but hey ho so uh, this is still unwrapped from last time so what we need to do is we don't want to touch any of the previous UV maps uh, mainly because they're lined out, they're fine don't need to touch them, not interested so what we need to do is just highlight the bits that we've just done so we're going to face select mode uh, again control shift or the face select down there and just literally holding shift and clicking, right clicking on each individual face each individual face that we need to unwrap so that's all of those selected and then this is the strange one we can either hit U unwrap which will create this crazy thing uh, which yeah that's fine actually I'll, I'll work with that so if we press with our cursor inside the um, inside the image editor shift space to make this full screen what we're going to do is click on one of the vertices press L and then S to shift uh, no not to shift to um, scale it down we don't want it too big but you want enough detail in there and then we're just going to drag it over to this open space just press R to rotate sorry drag was G move with G press G and then just move your, move your mouse uh, so yeah we just basically want to slot it into any open space that you feel you comfortable using okay so I feel comfortable over here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate it around using R until I'm happy with it so it's not touching anything on my actual texture here and it's not going off the edge here so that's fine for me I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that okay so with that done control S save that's fine um, that's going to be the end of this tutorial because like I said the texturing is going to be a little bit more advanced than last time so we're going to take a little bit more time on that because like I said it's not just going to be a case of exporting the UV map taking it into GIMP uh, and then everything's fine I wanted to use stencils and maybe a bit of uh, B projection painting using the actual texturing tools inside Blender um, so yeah that's all for now uh, if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more like this hit subscribe if you've got any thoughts or feelings or questions leave a comment um, but yeah thanks for watching